Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video I'm going to test out the Aska space plane without any assistance. Previously we tested it out with the Orion carrier plane doing the first bit and the space plane continuing on to orbit after that as a second stage. This time it will be solo. Uh, just a reminder, the Aska space plane is the scramjet aerospike without the scramjet. We still have the aerospikes, though we technically don't need them. Uh, we could use regular rocket engines. They were originally there because they continued the flow of the scramjet in a pleasant way, uh, possibly improving the performance of the scramjet uh, because its exhaust would basically be the same shape. And yeah, we don't really need uh, aerospikes, but we have tested the re-entry of the Aska space plane on that uh, attempt with the Orion carrier plane, so I don't want to change it up very much, uh, changing the balance, and we'll keep the aerospikes even though they're a little bit heavy uh, compared to other rocket engines potentially. Uh, so basically this is a Skylon setup. We've got uh, turbojet ramjets and then we've got rocket engines. The rocket engines just aren't built into the turbojet ramjets. And we're about the same mass. And we're not carrying cargo, but we are carrying a crew cabin, which is slightly lighter than the Skylon cargo. Uh, so we were expecting this to work out fairly well, but we have to check. So can it get to orbit without any help, without the scramjet? Is it even better without the scramjet? Maybe the scramjet is superfluous. Now, the scramjet I was using was fairly limited. It got the scramjet aerospike to not quite Mach 10. Uh, it dealt with the area between Mach 5 and Mach 9.3. So it was a fairly modest uh, expectation out of a scramjet. Uh, some uh, theorists say that scramjets could get to Mach 20. So it depends on what you think the scramjet can and can't do. I went with a very conservative approach, but if you go with the most extreme approaches, it really depends on the heat tolerance that you can deal with, ultimately. Uh, you could get more out of the scramjet. So, but the question is, with my conservative approach, uh, would this setup, without the scramjet at all, still perform just as well as the scramjet one? And if so, maybe we should up the efficiency of the scramjet, or uh, basically where it gets its optimal thrust, we could shift it up a little bit so that it could extend itself to Mach 12, and maybe then it have some more benefit. But we're going to use this as a baseline test to see whether that scramjet version is actually beneficial. Maybe it is. Uh, there is a lot of other variables like drag. Uh, this is a very different shape than Skylon. Uh, and it doesn't get body lift at all. So it's actually getting more drag than Skylon would. And so there's stuff like that and the uh, mass of the engines, the mass of the vehicle overall. Dry mass wise, uh, when we uh, dump all the propellant, uh, we're a little bit heavier than Skylon. And that's uh, Skylon dry. So we're probably lighter than Skylon with the cargo, I think. So there is that. And again, that makes sense since we're just a crew cabin without payload. So we will see. It is just expected to be a crewed vehicle, though it has some room for internal pressurized cargo that the crew can deliver to a space station, for instance. We do have that built in. Oh, a little accidental hop there. I mean, if it's a good, efficient uh, crewed vehicle, it might be a crewed vehicle that I use a lot since it looks good, you know, I mean. Why bother with a capsule kind of spacecraft? Well, if we can get this off the runway th safely, though. Okay. That's always tricky. So, we are out from Cape Canaveral today. We seem a little bit heavily laden here. We could probably reduce the liquid oxygen. We'll see. Uh, we're dipping down a little bit as we get past Mach 1. Okay, we're losing ground a bit here and approaching Mach 2.5, changing mode. Looking for Mach 5, but also don't want the liquid hydrogen to get too low. Doesn't look like we can get to Mach 5 right, like this. 
These are less powerful than the Skylon engines. That was to make them a little bit lighter. Well, we're not getting too much out of them, so I'm gonna try rocket mode now. Okay, let's just turn those off. And closing the intakes. Let us see. It's gotta be tight. It's really stayed to surface velocity there. Yeah, I don't think we have enough like this. Seemed like we actually had too much liquid and hydrogen. We could probably gone on for longer, but maybe we should just lighten up on the liquid hydrogen to begin with. Well, you can see why it was a worthy test. I mean, we are really close. Well, that's that. Oh, well, that amount of fuel is unusable, but basically we could dump a hundred thousand liquid hydrogen and be better off. We just barely didn't make orbit. You can see 7,700 meters per second. So let's try and dump that liquid hydrogen and see how that works out for us. So 900,000 liters, which uh, is a load that we've carried before in different sort of situations. Okay, here we go again with the different load. Yeah, atmospheric autopilot doesn't really like the plane as much as it used to for some reason. Like, I'm trying to pull up all the way with my joystick. It's only using about three-eighths of the pitch. But I guess it's alright. I guess atmospheric autopilot knows better than I do. Okay, we are past Mach 2.5 this time and switching to ramjet mode. I think we need the liquid hydrogen to be at about 500,000 for parity, so we'll keep trying to accelerate until then. And then we'll have to do rocket mode. Mach 4. Don't really want to go up too much more than this. But we're not getting to Mach 5 still, that's for sure. Well, I'll take Mach 4.5 and then we'll go from there. And go. Hopefully that'll do the trick. Okay, shutting off the jets, closing their intakes. Seems like we're in a better situation this time. Okay, throttling down. Let's see if we can make a good orbit here. Still tight. We'll probably have to shut down the engines and restart them at apoapsis or something like that. Okay, I'll take 160 for now. And we're going to have to coast and try and get into orbit at Apoapsis. This is still a suboptimal situation. We would like to be able to rendezvous with the station or something, uh, International Space Station, or some other vessel. And we're not going to be left with enough Delta V to do that. So we'll see. Add boosters. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, I guess at a certain point uh, we could benefit from some boosters, but we'd probably have to carry them off of the runway and we barely get off the runway as it is. Okay, well that's in orbit, 180 by 160, but only 88 meters per second left. So it's tight and I don't know if we can get off the runway with more fuel. 
our liquid hydrogen liquid oxygen mix is basically what you'd expect i don't even know if we get that 88 meters per second because of the residuals in 1.12 so it's going to be interesting yeah i don't know it's probably better if something else carries it or the scramjet margin is pretty tight too though but not quite as tight as this it's like it gives us a little bit more but not a lot more so but maybe this can be optimized a little bit more as well we'll see so maybe we should just build a crew cabin into Skylon. I mean, maybe maybe that's the better situation. I mean, Skylon can carry 12 tons. Maybe an ejectable crew cabin in Skylon. Like the, the middle portion like can eject out. So that's like an escape system. Well, we'll think about it. I think maybe it should just stick to being a scramjet aerospike and we might improve the scramjet performance a little bit to make it more worthwhile. But for now, Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.